this section we'll be looking at making outer air enclosures around a solid model. So to start, let's open up this cooling block under our volume enclosure folder. In the prepare tab, we have a lot of tools to help create geometry for analysis. Enclosure creates a volume around a solid. Notice so I press the F1 key as I hover over it, it can create a box, a cylinder, or a sphere around a part to use for your enclosure. Let's take a look at some of the options that we can use while we're in the enclosure tool. So what the enclosure tool does is let you select a single body or multiple bodies to create an enclosure around. It starts in the select tool guide and simply selecting on a part will put a temporary enclosure around it so you can see what it's going to look like. And in the options, you can choose box, cylinder, or sphere. One thing I want to point out is whatever you make the enclosure around, that's what will be used. If I click on this large body and hit the check mark, you'll notice a new enclosure is made in the structure tree. If I hide component 1 and hide component 2, you can see the enclosure goes around that top solid, and you can see the internals as well. I'm going to undo before I made that enclosure. Now, let's see what happens if I click the bottom solid, and I control select the top one. So I'm picking both of them. And the order doesn't matter. I could select the top, control select the bottom, or if I click in white space, I could box select all of them. Now when I hit the check mark, it makes the enclosure around all of them at the same time. So because that bottom solid capped it off, notice we only see the externals for it, we don't see the internal region. Let's take a look at a few other things with this enclosure. One thing you'll notice is that the enclosure is aligned to the world origin that's there as I'm making this box. Now, it's not aligned to the orientation of what the model is in currently. And to do that, we would use our Set Orientation Tool Guide. This lets you click an edge and align it to that edge. So now the box we're making is aligned to the edge that I have selected. So it's a fast way to reorient the box you're using to make the enclosure. Now let's take a look if I was making a cylinder. So I'll choose cylinder in the options, grab it, and notice our cylinder is going up and down. It's guessing the Z direction to make the cylinder by default. If I change the orientation, click this edge, notice I can change the orientation of the cylinder. Now as we're making these different bodies, whether it's a sphere, a cylinder, or a box, we may want to also change the cushion around these components. Notice in the options we have two choices. I can go by percentage, so I can make the enclosure 50%. I can make it 100% larger than the actual body. Or I can type numbers into these boxes to determine that as well. Type in 2 inches, type in 1 inch, or type in 4. Now one thing you're not going to be able to do is type in zero. If we type in zero and try to make the enclosure, you'll notice a lot of times it won't be subtracted from the enclosure. And that's because a lot of times when you do something like this, I'm going to hit S for select, or escape out of this. If you type in zero, a lot of times you'll make a non-manifold region around the body or around the model. And that's not going to be allowed. So the best thing to do is if you wanted to reduce it and to make it smaller afterwards, undo. So let's say I wanted to make this 10%. Pretty small, but I still have a cushion around everything. If I create that box around it, just so we can see the enclosure now, you'll notice the enclosure is a solid that's there. 
So if you do want to make it, to slice it, to make it smaller, to change it in any way, shape, or form, you can use pull and pull on the body to make a change. Pull on a top face to change it higher or lower. Take edges and add rounds or chamfers to them. This is a body that you can change, modify, pull one face up to the bottom. So you can still make these changes and modifications to the body after it's been created. So I'm going to delete this enclosure and start one more time. Let's make a box 50% bigger and let's have it oriented to the model. So I'm going to go to enclosure, choose what I want to enclose, great. Choose my cushion, let's make it 50% and choose my orientation. <laughs> So I'm going to set my orientation along this edge. Great. And now I'll hit the check mark and create that enclosure. Now one thing that I want to mention here is let's say we change the bodies we're working on. Let's say what I want to do is actually pull this base to be a little bit taller. And I'll double click and double click with pull. So I double clicked, control double clicked to grab all those outside faces and I pull them bigger as well. You'll notice the enclosure doesn't meet up with those new bodies. The solid that I have now is bigger than what I had before. If you right click on the enclosure body, notice you can update the enclosure. What this does, it uses the same percentage as before, it uses the same orientation, and it uses <coughs> the same bodies, and it subtracts them from the enclosure. So when I click Update Enclosure, notice it keeps the same orientation, keeps the same percentage, and it subtracts the new bodies from the enclosure. There's a quick way to re-update the enclosure if you need to. So if you've seen some of the different ways you can create an enclosure around a body and space claim to help with fluid analysis. Thank you very much for watching.